Welcome to Module 3, the final module in our series on healthcare standards for medical imaging. We'll begin by discussing Hospital Language 7 or HL7. Then we will look at HL7 Fire. And finally, we'll look at integrating the healthcare enterprise. In Module 1, we had an introductory presentation, and Module 2, we went into DICOM Explained. So let's begin with Health Language 7, or HL7 International. Medical imaging uses the DICOM standard and the HL7 standards for medical images and text. Medical images are captured on the imaging modality and then processed through the hospital information system, PACS, and RIS computers to produce a diagnostic image and report. Hospital Language 7 is the international standard for medical text worldwide for HL7 has been the worldwide standard since 1987. And here we see a graphic as to how it references to diagnostic medical imaging and the use of text within the computer systems associated with diagnostic medical imaging. Again, the interface of both the PACS and RIS system with the hospital information system is what the radiographer or medical imaging professional needs to understand. All transmitted files will have a header that will contain similar information. The message header in HL7 contains the source of the information plus the destination and relevant details. DICOM is primarily a standard forma for medical images. HL7 allows the machines to talk to each other and exchange text data, including registration, discharge, lab results, and reports. But HL7 was not designed to handle image data. So HL7 is married to DICOM in medical imaging. This module or the information contained in is not to teach IT nor informatics but to let you understand how informatics and IT impact upon medical imaging. Health Level 7 is an industry standard dealing with the interchange of data between systems in a healthcare enterprise. The HL7 standard is maintained by Health Level 7, a nonprofit organization dedicated to creating standards that facilitate communication between healthcare. The HL7 standard defines a non proprietary message format used to communicate patient information. The standard defines the message types that communicate a specific subset of information. It also defines the information or fields included in each type of message. The message types supported by the PAX viewer system are the Admission, Discharge, and Transfer, or ADT, the ORM, ORR, ORU, and SIU, which we will see what those different abbreviations mean in just a few minutes. There are a large number of different message types defined in the HL7 standard. The HL7 standards has many specifications. System synchronization and support process specs are required. We'll now look at some of the principles of informatics, starting with the operating systems interface. This is a concept of how operating systems should be interfaced and is used worldwide for all computer systems. We start with how we are connecting our systems physically. 
It can be by wire or cable or some other methodology of connecting to the network. At the level 7, which is the top layer, we're looking at the application layer. This is how we transmit and receive data. Data is transmitted by the user. The data starts at the data application level, then it goes down to the presentation layer, the session layer, the transport layer, the network layer, the data link layer, and finally layer 1, our physical layer or connection. When the data is received at the other end of the physical length, it goes just the reverse. We start at the data link layer, we go to the network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer, and the application layer, which is what we look at on our monitor. HL7 takes a different approach than DICOM in these layers. Unlike DICOM, which specifies a standard for multiple levels of the OSI model and has a strict conformance requirements, HL7 approaches this by addressing the seventh level of the OSI model, the application layer, hence the name HL7 Healthcare Language. For HL7, the entire seventh level is considered the OSI model. Therefore, with HL7, we have a message type. Each message has a message type that is unique identifier of the purpose of the message. The message type is limited in the message header segment of every HL7 message. The message event. The message event, which is sometimes called the message trigger, is an identifier to the context in which the HL7 message was generated. After the message type and message event, we have the message structure. The message structure is a data structure that expresses an association of a message type with an event for a class of HL7 messages. Each message structure also contains a unique identifier or ID. It structurally consists of a well-defined list of HL7 segments. So HL7, Hospital Language 7, is the most widely implemented standard for healthcare information in the world and has been around since 1987. There are billions of texts out there in use in healthcare that are already stored in HL7 format. Of course, this is like comparing the telegraph, telephone, and finally into the cell phone era, different types of transmissions. Today, we use a different type of transmission for data than we originally used in 1987 for healthcare level seven. Sort of like it's the telephone poles were used to carry the data in 1987. Now, we can't go back and redo all of the data that's already been stored. So what we do have is called FHIR or FHIR, which is a rapid system of communicating Health Language 7 data over the World Wide Web. And it uses the modern tools of the World Wide Web. So with HL7, the primary goal was to provide standards for the exchange of data among health computer applications. An event in the healthcare world called the trigger event causes the exchange of the messages between a pair of applications. When an event occurs in the HL7 compliance system, an HL7 message is prepared by collecting the necessary data from the underlying systems and it is passed to the requester usually as an electronic data interchange message. So it's easy to see how medical imaging with HL7 can be part of the electronic healthcare record. 
Though many information systems do not natively communicate message in HL7 format, most provide HL7 interfaces, which allow such messages to be communicated to and from the external world. The HL7 standard addresses currently interfaces among systems that send or receive the following types of messages. Patient admission, discharge, and transfer data, ADT. Queries, resource, and patient scheduling. Orders, results, and clinical observations. Billing, master file update information, and medical records. Finally, scheduling, patient referral, and patient care. There are th many types of messages that can be received and processed by the HL7 services. The three main message types that we utilize are ADT, Admission, Discharges, and Transfers, or Messages for Patient Demographic Information. The ORM message, which schedules exam orders, and the ORU message, which is an observation or a report. Other types of messages that can be received include ORR messages, which are response messages usually sent from one information system to another. Response messages are oftentimes used to send confirmation messages, such as to confirm that an exam has been canceled. The hospital information system and the radiology information system use HL7 to communicate between each other. As the HL7 data is received by the HL7 interface, it is written to the text file named HL7 text. Any new HL7 data is added to this file and is made available to the HL7 processor service. The file will continue to grow as new data is received, but it will remain in the HL7 service directory until the HL7 processor service captures the file and begins processing the data for entry into a SQL 7 search query language database. The size of the file varies based upon the amount of data being sent by the hospital radiology information system and by the length of the delay and the HL7 processor has been configured. The delay period is set to mm, 30 seconds by default and the delay is the amount of time that the HL7 processor will wait before it reaches any new HL7 text. So every 30 seconds, the HL7 processor checks to see if there is a file named HL7 text located in the PAX HL7 service history directory. If it is located, the processor renames the file and puts it into queue. Once the file has been renamed, the processor begins to extract the information that will be used to populate the SQL database and perform inserts updates, and modifications as needed. The data is extracted according to the specified instructions found in the HL7 map profile. The map files are unique to each site and for each sending facility. Every 30 seconds, the HL7 processor checks to see if there is a file named HL7 text located in the PACS HL7 service directory. The HL7 processor is granted rights and permissions by the PACS, which it allows it to make entries into the SQL database. Patient entries, order entries, and other modifications, cancellations, and reports are just a few of the entries that can be made by the HL7 processor. The HL7 processor will check the database to see if there is any existing entry for a particular patient. If no entry is found, a new record is created in the database. If the patient entry exists, 
the HL7 processor will make the changes or updates to the patient's information, example, name changes, social security numbers, etc. A query of the database in the workstation will return a list of the ordered exams. Now let's talk about transcription. Transcription methods vary from site to site, but the processes are basically the same. When a radiologist performs a read of an exam, whether it's from a direct audio capture system or a phone-based system or even voice recognition software, the information is forwarded to a transcription service. The transcription service takes the audio information and transcribes it into text form. The transcription is then forwarded to the hospital and RIS information systems. The RIS system sends the report data to the PACs via the HL7ORU messages. The reports are processed and inserted into the database and linked to the appropriate exam. Final observation reports can then be viewed in the workstation along with the corresponding images. While the development of HL7 has been an important step in the right direction for the standardization of healthcare records, implementation still varies dramatically between each organization and integration challenges remain all too common. While the improvement of HL7 has been a significant positive development for the normalization of healthcare records, integration challenges stay very normal. Again, HL7 was uh, utilized for the very first time about 1987 and version 3 was first conceived of almost 15 years ago. The technology and the approach of the interoperability has since then become a risk because it is becoming irrelevant. The HL7 version 2 was pretty good, but as they tried to improve it into the version 3, which they did about 15 years ago, it became too hard. And so basically what we looked at is how can we get this fixed and get a new system going? And this is where we came up with FIRE. FIRE is a programmable interface. HL7 FIRE is an application programmable interface where we can actually program it to the different applications that we need to import and export the HL7 from. So let's take a look at HL7 FHIR, pronounced FIRE, and it stands for Fast Healthcare Interoperability of Resources. FIRE is simply an upgrade that combines the best features of HL7's various versions and then relies upon the latest and most up-to-date web standards to solve challenges in interoperability. With the federal government mandating that FIRE be used to get payment for, from CMS for Medicaid, Medicare, etc., it will force both manufacturers and hospital systems to adapt the system more rapidly. So we start with electronic medical records and electronic healthcare records that use HL7, and then we put an adapter or an application programmable interface on the back end. On the back end, we have FHIR clinical data storage, a FHIR terminology services, a FHIR security and audit services, and a FHIR conversion engine. Having this manipulation and data available, we can take advantage of smart apps on the internet, such as wearable healthcare provider information systems, telemedicine, medical device uh, integrations, home and care and hospice, 
or even having patient direct engagement with the system. Actually, we're pretty used to fire in a sense. And I say that because when I take a look at fire, I can make the analogy as HL7 was the same as when we used to have a cell phone that just had cell service. HL7 with fire or HL7 fire is having a modern cell phone that allows us to use applications, applications that we can both download for free and applications that we might end up paying for. But all of these applications, you may choose any combination and have only one or as many as you wish. So let's explore how HL7 Fire uses the internet and the applications layer to be able to send information across the internet from the user and use the tools of the browser. We use HTTP or Hypertext Transport Protocol to address the server from the client. At the server, the functions are carried out of the request and when they are completed, the information is taken from the server and sent back to the requester or the client. Fire solutions are built from a set of modular components called resources. These resources can easily be assembled into working systems that solve real-world clinical problems and administrative problems at a fraction of the price of existing alternatives. These applications allow electronic health care resources to access all of the information on the web very inexpensively through new sources such as apps and cloud communications, therefore making Fire much cheaper and faster than the traditional HL7. Not only is Fire faster, but it has more access worldwide and it has easy retrieval of information. When getting ready to implement FHIR, several challenges and considerations should be kept in mind. First of all, this is a worldwide endeavor. Every single center that has to do with health care can utilize the FHIR application. So the adoption is going to be very slow. We all know HL7 has been widely accepted in healthcare information sharing standard for decades, but FHIR is still young and dynamic. There is no doubt in the effective benefits of FHIR, but again, the adaptation is going to be slow. The financial cost to both vendors and healthcare systems is going to be great. To help with the implementation, the federal government is trying to have the FHIR applications and HL7 in place by January 1st, 2026. And basically they are doing this by using financial incentives through the CMS or the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services where they reimburse hospitals. So Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources, or FHIRE, is a standard describing data formats and elements known as resources and an application programming interface for exchanging electronic healthcare records. The standard was created with Health Level 7 International. Health Level 7 is an international organization whose primary activities are developing, coordinating, promulgating, revising, amending, reissuing, interpreting, or otherwise producing technical standards that are intended to address the needs of a group of affected adapters. The first FHIR application was introduced in 2014 as an alternative to Health Level 7, HL7 version 2, 
as an open standard that enables new apps and legacy systems to more easily exchange data than in the past. Remember, FHIR is an API or an application programmable interface that is used worldwide on the World Wide Web. It is not a private system and it is used for interfacing healthcare. The Internet and the World Wide Web are two different things. The Internet is a system and the World Wide Web is the availability of data across the system. The workhorse of the World Wide Web and transferring of data is called Hypertext Transport Protocol. It carries all data formats and forms across the web. The Internet Protocol for transferring data is known as TCP. So TCP slash IP is how we send data across the Internet. The data is comprised of both text and images, and this is where we have HL7 and DICOM working together with HL7 Fire enabling us to use the Internet. FHIRE is an API or application protocol interface on the Internet to allow us to be able to use the different protocols on the Internet or methods for devices to communicate with each other. These can be TCP or Transport Control Protocol or UDP User Data Program. Hypertext Transport Protocol is the way we take and transport all the binary digit numbers that make up coding across the Internet. This means that the HTTP is actually a highway for every type of data available. The way we access the fast lane is through HL7 with a FHIR API, or Application Programmable Interface. In today's technological world, healthcare organizations have a lot of choices to make when developing solutions with regards to the interoperability, technology stacks, HIPAA, compliance, integration, and data management. Fast Healthcare Interoperability, FHIR, is an innovative technology in the healthcare industry today. HL7 integration provides solutions for text and the API FHIR allows us to take and interface with all the providers that are available today on the World Wide Web. This, is, this runs the gamut from a hospital care registry or data depository all the way through your personal data that you are collecting on your Fitbit. FHIRE allows clinical applications to access patient data outside of the electronic healthcare record while remaining standards compliant. FHIRE does not impose any limits on the development practices you use and offers many benefits for data management and interoperability. So we return to the beginning where we looked at the primary components that we use for transferring data and medical images in the hospital information system, PACs, and RIS. That data complies with DICOM and HL7 standards. Here we demonstrate the type of data and the relationships of the data interfacing in between the HIS, the RIFs, and the PACs. Just follow the data using these little dots to get an idea of the interfaces that are required for just ordering one medical imaging exam.
This is called Workflow, so let's take a look at the interactive multimedia workflow. We start with the hiss and riss, and the hiss and riss actually interact with image modalities, advanced imaging working stations, and artificial intelligence creators. That information then goes into the packs. From the packs, a report is created. Upon creation of the report, the report is sent out to the patient portal, the EMR, and the HIE by the HIS, and it is also sent to the PACS archival communication system for storage. This is our multimedia workflow. We can see that primarily in medical imaging we use DICOM and HL7 with some other standards included. But we also do interact with IHE, which is Integrating the Healthcare Enterprise. IHE is not a standard. It is how we organize and use the data, and it is a protocol for how to organize and use the data that we've produced through DICOM and HL7. Equipment manufacturers build these protocols into their systems and they have what are called connectathons. Here they check and try to connect with each other's systems and see if the data works appropriately or is interoperable. Sometimes it can work well and sometimes it does not work well. And then they can go back and tweak the information in their product. Integration of the Healthcare Enterprise or IHE is an initiative by healthcare professionals and industry to improve the way computer systems and healthcare share information. Systems developed in accordance with IHE protocols communicate with one another better and are easier to implement and enable care providers to use information more effectively.